So, yeah, so back to where we started. It was just a Viewlet library, and now it's more like a progressive framework. And so Matthew just mentioned now that uh, Ember was facing the problem of how to scale down to like extremely simple use cases. And turns out you went from a different direction where we started out as a solution to these extremely simple situations, but we gradually added on layers of uh, additional pieces that can help you handle more complex scenarios, which turn out to form this kind of like onion-like layer on layer upon layers of um, additional tooling that, ev uh, that eventually would be able to provide you a whole stack solution that helps you handle like projects with higher complexity demands. But the more important part is it preserves this really simple, extremely simple starting experience where the hello world is literally like 10 lines of code in a plain HTML file. You can just drop in Vue.js from the CDN and start coding. Uh, and for more complex scenarios, we have official CLI that allows you to bootstrap a production-ready boilerplate um, Webpack powered in five commands. Uh, if you have already installed Vue CLI, it's a few commands to just get you started with all this um, thousand whistles, hot reload, and more importantly, support for Vue's single file components, which uh, is heavily inspired by Polymer's uh, web component format, but is uh, a build tool powered format, which um, as you can see, it can uh, you can treat it as a JavaScript module, and the template and style parts are processed built by build tools like Webpack at build time, So, which means you can apply a custom transform, so you can use uh, like Jade for the template, you can use uh, SAS or PostCSS for the styles, and everything compiles down to a JavaScript bundle. Um, so 2016, uh, last September 30th, we released V2.0. It was a full rewrite, but preserves largely similar API to 1.x. Uh, it now uses a new virtual DOM-driven rendering layer inspired by React. And um, we have this uh, compilation process, which compiles uh, templates into uh, templates, which were inspired by Angular 1. Uh, we, we compile it down into render function code. And this process can be done either uh, just in time or ahead of time. So when you use the just in time build, you get the experience of just dropping in one file into the browser and start hacking. And when you use uh, the build tools, you can uh, completely do this te template to render function compilation at build time, and you can ship to the browser without a compilation, uh, without a compiler at all. So the introduction of Virtual DOM gives you 2.0 universal rendering capabilities, so we can do server-side rendering with streaming and component caching, and we have native rendering via Alibaba's uh, Weeks project, which um, is a native rendering platform which uh, allows you to use custom runtime JavaScript frameworks. So uh, a, few a few weeks ago, they just open sourced their um, React alternative called Rax, and they also support Vue 2.0 officially, so both frameworks can be used as the runtime JavaScript framework for weeks. Um, in 2.0, we also upgraded the whole ecosystem of the router, Vuex, which is official state management library, uh, the CLI dev tools, and we also now provide official TypeScript typing for all core libraries. So um, November, we released 2.1. Uh, one of the biggest thing is better component comp composability with scope slots. So uh, Vue, provides this slot mechanism, which is very similar to what uh, is specified in Shadow DOM and also, um, also similar to how uh, React components can render their children, which are passed in as, as a prop. Um, but in 2.1, we provide scope slots, which um, sort of like you can, how you can pass a function as a prop into a React component that renders, uh, that returns other components. Um, so, so you can do this in 2.1, and uh, we also now support ES2015 in all template expressions. Uh, December, we released Vuex 2.1, which one of the biggest improvement is namespace modules. So in Vuex, which is a state management library, you can break down all these uh, assets like state, actions, mutations, getters into self-contained modules. And more, more importantly, um, you, can separate, you can ship these module files along with your uh, associated components, but finally you can still assemble all these like decoupled modules into a single store, which enables uh, time travel debugging and all that uh, goodness that you get by using a single state tree. So Weeks released 0.9.4 uh, in December and now officially uses Vue 2 as a default JavaScript runtime framework. 
And um, so you can use the same single file view component format for universal rendering. And you can even use Vuex and view router in Weeks projects too. So they made this demo, uh, which is a clone of the official view Hacker News 2.0 demo. Uh, it's now rendered on uh, in iOS and Android uh, natively. And earlier this year, we shipped a 3.0 of the view dev tools with a lot of UX improvements. Uh, so this is demoing the process of using it with Vuex for uh, time travel debugging, and you can inspect the state and time travel to them. Um, two days ago, we shipped view router 2.2, improved API to make components more decoupled from the router. And more importantly, it ships with some preparations for server-side rendering improvements in view core 2.2, so which is our upcoming release. So in 2.2, uh, the, the primary improvements are going to be about server-side rendering. Um, so we are going to ship, a, uh, we are going to improve the bundle renderer to provide seamless support for Webpack code splitting. So you can use um, this exact same code base uh, with code splitting. You can build uh, two separate bundles, one for server and one for client. And the server-side bundle, uh, the view 2.2 bundle renderer will support this bundle format. So you can use the exact code splitting, code splitting code for both server and client. And we provide source map stack traces for server-side rendering errors, automatic critical CSS for all the styles and single file view components, um, and some other improvements including, these are planned, uh, built-in perf timeline support, similar to what we act shipped in 15.4, 15.4, and better error, error recovery. So Vue currently already uses a internal scheduler to handle the rendering updates uh, of co components. And these jobs are kind of discrete from each other already. So we already have the infrastructure to do proper error, error recovery for um, component updates. We just plan to expand all, upon that a bit more. Roadmap after 2.2, we're uh, planning to improve the testing story. The community currently is actively exploring various solutions. Uh, one of them is uh, testing how Jest would work with Vue. And uh, we also plan to upgrade the existing Vue CI templates for uh, projects that need server-side rendering, uh, progressive web app projects, and weak space projects. Um, so these will come after we ship 2.2. And we also have some ongoing experiments that's kind of for the long term. These are, uh, some of them are in the backlog. Some of them already have a kind of a semi-working branch. So the first is using ES2015 proxy-based observation mechanism. So for those of you who don't know, he uses uh, ES5 getters and setters currently for data observation. So by using ES2015 proxy, we get the benefits of, we get rid of all the current uh, data observ uh, re reactivity gotchas, where, for example, you need to explicitly declare adding a new property, or you cannot set the index of a, an array. So with proxy, these problems are, are gone, and proxy naturally enables us to perform lazy observation too, which means you no longer have to pay the upfront, upfront cost of observing a huge data tree if your data set is really, really big. Um, we're also experimenting with progressive booting hydration with request idle callback, uh, inspired by some blog posts from uh, Paul Lewis. Um, we also have a community effort of integrating a Vue 2.0 with custom elements V1. Um, so uh, compiling single file view components down into a native custom element that you can just share with uh, any other framework. And also CSS variable based theming in single file view components, uh, which um, allows you to uh, theme a large set of components with, from a central file instead of having to uh, import these um, preprocessor specific uh, like variable files into each file. So these are all things we are experimenting with. And lastly, we have an upcoming ViewConf that's going to be in June uh, in Poland uh, because um, the generous company that's sponsoring it is based in Poland. And uh, we'd encourage anyone interested in Vue to check it out. So that's all I have. Thank you. Hey there. Are you into reactive programming using JavaScript? Do you have to deal with asynchrony in your web app? Then join this dot instructor Ben Lesh to learn all of the ins and outs of RxJS in his hands-on workshop. The next Rx workshop will be held in Silicon Valley on March 3rd and online April 13th. Go to rxworkshop.com for more details and to reserve your spot.